It was the year 2001 when my dear associate Hayward Collins and I produced a local Bay Area television show, Bay 902, when we were approached by Matisse Roach. She wanted us to help her tell her side of the story. Matisse has produced, managed, and worked with many artists and their labels, such as L.A. and Babyface, Pebbles, Bobby Brown, Sherelle, Dwayne Wiggins, Paula Abdul, and Karen White, just to name a few. Matisse wanted to be heard about her experience of not receiving her proper due in regards to her discovery of Beyoncé and the original Destiny's Child girls group. She states the group was originally a dancing troupe and were called the girls prior to the name Destiny's Child. Matisse speaks about her dealings with Matthew Knowles, as well as she's already filed the court papers. And well, we have the exclusive. Watch Matisse tell her side of the story right now. And uh, it was a little team pop group, and 
actually weren't a group, they were a dancing troupe. And I stopped them and they were outside just rehearsing for, I guess, a play or something they were involved with. And I asked them, you know, in, in the music business and singing show business, I said, excuse me, do you guys sing? And they all kind of laughed and they said, yes, but we're really actresses and dancers. And they were so charming, they had so much personality. Um, I said, well, can, would you mind singing something? And they did. And I fell in love with these, they were 12 and 13 years old. There's four of them, and they were, I guess, best friends because of their, you know, uh, dance troupe and so forth. And so I brought the group to one of the producers that I was working with. I talked to them about the concept of singing. Um, they were a little bit shy about it, but they, they liked the idea. So I started developing them to be a, you know, female singing team group. And at that time, I realized there's no other team there. Um, and I took it to a lot of people, and everybody seemed to hate the idea. Um, I told them I think that it's something, it's a huge void in the music industry, and I just think it could be huge just based on the fact that there's no competition. And um, I can't think of anybody else. There were a lot of other pop groups, the, the Bangles and the Go-Go's, but they were always in their late 20s, um, you know, and so I just really always wanted to have a team pop group. So I, um, you know, when I first reached Mr. Dwayne, he said, no, I don't want to do that. I don't like that idea. Then about five years later, I guess, uh, a few years later, the Backstreet Boys hit it really big, even though they weren't really a team, but they were really popular, and then uh, some other groups started kind of popping up, and I kept saying, Dwayne, we should do this little team pop I'm telling you, there's still, even though I mentioned this five years ago, there's still a boy, there's still not one, somebody's going to figure it out, we should do it. So he kind of, uh, you know, honestly speaking, he was looking at the success of them, and he's like, you know what, you might have a good idea, you know, maybe you're right. And, um, but his first response was, if no one ever thought of a teen pop group, female, because there's a lot of teen right. idols and right. teen males, but he's like, there must be something wrong with it. There's no way everybody could just skip the notion to put together a female teen group. And I said, well, I don't know, but I know that that's an idea that would work, and that's something I want to do. And he said, well, let's do it. And so he said, let's start asking around. We put together, you know, some more flyers. And, um, start asking around for, do you know any little singers that are 12, 13 when the time passed by? Uh, Dwayne ended up asking a friend about some teen girls, and we got a number. We contacted them, we got the tape, and uh, it was the best demo we ever heard in our life, I think to this day. Um, and it happened to be a group called the girls, and they are now called Destiny's Child. So um, that was the start of, uh, you know, you know, bringing Destiny's Child to grassroots. Um, their management was contracted, contacted, uh, which their manager's Matthew knows, and he has such a passion for them. I mean, he loves that group. Um, he and his, I guess, former partner, or I don't know, I'm not going to go into details about that, but basically, um, Matthew knows um, is the manager of the girls, and he uh, loved the group, and he just would do anything to make that group happen. Um, from working seven days a week for them being trained on how to speak, how to dance, what to sing. They had routines. They were so professional, and they still are to this day. And uh, they're, they're all perfectionists, the girls. Um, I, I believe they got that from their, their father and their parents. But uh, they're, they're a great group, and we have never met people like that, ever. And I don't know if we ever will. Matisse. I have a document here that states that on March 28th of this year that you filed in Los Angeles Superior Court a lawsuit alleging that Wiggins reneged on his promise to compensate you with 50% of the profits from his grassroots entertainment group, Inc., the company responsible for getting Destiny's Child signed to Columbia Records. Is that true? Um, unfortunately, It also states here that Wiggins Company never provided formal accounting of the funds issued to him and only paid you 10% of the royalty as opposed to 50%. Is there a way that you can elaborate on that? I don't, I'm sorry, I wouldn't be able to at this time. I'm not, I'm not able to elaborate on that at all. So I have no comment for that at this time. Thank you for talking to us here at Bay 902 TV. 
and continued success. And yeah. we're going to wish you the best in uh, your legal situation here. And uh, we hope to talk to you after it's all over.